Hey everybody, what's up? It's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and it's time for another edition of Something Old, Something New. Whoa! Today for Something Old, we're gonna check out an album that you have to own. It's 1979 and the classic record from the germs, G.I. When it comes to the classic idea of live fast, rock hard, and die young, nobody represents it quite like the germs. And there's no question that they remain one of the most important and influential bands in the entire history of punk and hardcore music. Pulling as much from Chuck Berry as they did from the Dead Boys, nobody quite did it like the germs when it comes to the idea of looking like they're not taking themselves very seriously, when in reality they're one of the most sophisticated bands ever. Produced by none other than Joan Jett, G.I. has a very raw feeling that's absent from almost every other so-called seminal hardcore album. And this somewhat thin sound helps to perfectly represent the band and their live sound that was nothing short of ferocious. Many modern listeners will almost instantly hear a direct connection to bands like Nirvana and Foo Fighters, and this is not only due to the band's massive influence, but the fact that the Germs guitar player Pat Smear has played in both of those later bands. The rhythm section is also outright explosive, and while they said they were trying to emulate the classic record, never mind the bollocks, the fact of the matter is, in the end, they absolutely bury that album. Along with their fantastic sound, there's no question that Darby Crash stands as one of the most prolific and misunderstood frontmen in all of music history. As his angst-ridden and often outright brutal vocals are a perfect complement to the often apocalyptic lyrics that they sing. The fact of the matter is, no band brings it quite like the germs, and G.I. is as amazing an album as you'll ever find. If you somehow don't own this record, get on it right now. Thank me later. Today for something new, we're gonna check out the brand new release from the CN Cake, and it's called Runner. This is the band's first full record in almost four years. And to be completely honest, I wasn't even gonna review it. I had another record chosen for this week, but when I heard this album, I really had no choice, as it's one of the most uniquely great records I've heard all year. While most of their albums to date have been a bit predictable in terms of the musical structure, this time around, they get as experimental as they can possibly get, and they even go as far as delving into full on electronica at some moments. But somehow, whatever they're doing musically, it still managed to work and fit in their general form. You've still got those really deep, moody, and mellow atmospheres that they've perfected throughout their career to date, but they show here that they're able to kick it up into a rock and roll style like never before. On the whole though, Runner seems to be a bit less dependent on their guitar sound, and whether it's synthesizers or a number of other instrumental tricks, they quickly set this album apart from their entire catalog in a very, very good way. The vocals are as good as ever, and when it comes to distinctive singers in the current music scene, few can hold their own against Sam Precop. More so than ever, his voice acts as an instrument onto itself. Itself, lifting almost every song to greater heights than they've ever achieved previously. As always, the grooves the Sea and Cake are able to achieve on their albums are above and beyond almost any other band on the planet. And while a lot of people like to pigeonhole them in genres like dream pop or indie rock, the fact of the matter is these guys make music like nobody else. The bounce, the mood, and just everything about this album is as good as the Sea and Cake have ever sounded. And if you're not familiar with them, Runner is a great place to start because on the Buy It or Borrow It, this record is a 100% buy it. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you dug it. If you did, click subscribe, leave a comment, click like, whatever you want to do. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr right here, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow.